In South Africa, Ace Magashule, former Secretary General of the ruling African National Congress, has launched a new political party ahead of the 2024 general elections in that country. Magashule, a close ally of ex-president Jacob Zuma, was kicked out of the ANC this year over corruption allegations, but remains popular with parts of the left-leaning electorate. He says the African Congress for Transformation, or ACT as the new party is named, is aimed at championing the plight of all South Africans, calling it a new home for the homeless, the betrayed and the fatigued. Let's stay in South Africa where the bail application of Thabo Besta, the co-accused, Nandifa Magadumana, are continued in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court on Wednesday where Nandifa Magadumana applied for bail following her attempt to have her arrest overturned. Magadumana is among the 12 people accused of aiding the convicted rapist and murderer Thabo Besta to escape from the Manganung or Mangong Correctional Center in the Free State, South Africa in May 2022. Magadumana told the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court that she did not leave voluntarily with uh, the country with her boyfriend Thabo Besta, but did so under pressure and threats from the convicted rapist and murderer. Glad to say we have joining us uh, right now on NC Continental Prime, Umpumu, Umpumelelo uh, Zika Lala uh, joins us from Durban, South Africa to give us an update on what transpired. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening to you and also good evening to your viewers. What is uh, latest from the courts uh, on, on uh, this medical doctor, Nandifa Amagu Dumana, and uh, the bail application that she filed? Hmm. You remember that previously she had filed a high court application saying that her arrest was actually a, 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 an extradition which was disguised as a deportation. Now, on that basis, I think she has now realized that I think it's going to be much better if I'm making a bail application compared to the application which I'm now pursuing within the Supreme Court of Appeals. Now, when it, when it comes to bail applications, there are two sections, the two pieces of law that you look at. The first one is Section 35 of the Constitution that says a person is presumed innocent, and where the interest of justice permits, so they can so be released on bail. And in order to assess that, you then look at Section 60 of the Criminal Procedure Act that gives you the four salient points that must be proved in order for one to be allowed to be granted bail. Basically saying, are you going to be a danger to the public? Uh, do we run the risk of you interfering or concealing any evidence that is there? Do we run the risk of you evading trial and eloping maybe to another country? And then lastly, is the granting of bail to you going to undermine the manner in which or the processes of justice that ought to be done in that particular manner? Also take into account the type of preventive measures that can be there. For example, like saying I must report on a daily basis to the nearest police station. So what we saw through the proceedings in the last two days was an application in which Dr. Makudumano was saying to the court, these are my personal circumstances. I am a resident of South Africa. I have kids there that go to school. I also have where I can be able to go and stay. You can go and verify my address. And the state, of course, going in, in terms of the nature of the relationship that existed between Mr. Best and Dr. Makudumano, saying that this is not an individual that can be trusted. And, and in closing, Dr. Makudumano coming back and saying, all the other allegations which are going to be there are going to be proved within the trial stage. It is too early for the state to go into the actual merits of the matter. There they is going to be a defense at the, at the end of the day. And you've received glimpses of the defense in terms of saying, uh, probably she will say, I was kidnapped. I did not participate in this whole process voluntarily. On that basis, it means that I did not have the requisite intention of participating in the criminal activities that have been alleged of committing. Mm. Interesting. Um, uh, you know, she is arguing that if the state rather is arguing that if given bail that uh, uh, Dr. Magadumana can, could evade justice. And uh, talking about the application that she brought against uh, the South African and Tanzanian police insofar as the extradition uh, is concerned. Uh, and this narrative also of her being kidnapped. Can we say it is a strategy? It's a strategy by her. Mm. We, we, we could say so. Now, her strategy would be to say, firstly, I want to dispute every single thing that, that pertains to the legality of how I was brought into South Africa. 
And then secondly, um, I, I want to show the court that I'm a willing participant and I'm going to obey the law. It's just that I'm looking for this particular reprieve to be given to go and spend some time with my kids and also to be to, to, to enjoy my freedom. Remember, the Constitution is very prescription as per Section 35. It says that the person is innocent up until proven guilty. So if there's no evidence that has been led that says you are going to evade trial, then there's absolutely no way in which a court will come to that particular conclusion. Also, check into account that she is regarded as a first offender. So she has never been convicted of any criminal offense or there are no pending matters that are against her. And even if they are pending matters that she was alleged by the state, it is still matters that are under investigation. So she has not appeared in any other court other than the one in Longwater in order to go and defend herself. So on that basis, she does stand a much stronger chance of being granted bail, but it was important for her to lament on those things because that's when you want to try and prove to the court that in the balance of probabilities are speaking the truth and she's indeed in the right. interest of justice at the very least on bail. Mm. Uh, Mpumelelo, uh, looking at the seriousness of the charges against uh, Dr. Nandifa Magadumana uh, and the people who were impacted, uh, it seems she has, we can say she has a lot to answer. Um, is the state regarding her as a very important player uh, in all of this? You know, and do you think that at some point the South African state might decide to turn her uh, into a state witness? Mm. Definitely. Um, if, if you look at the, how this whole process was allegedly orchestrated, you basically needed someone who was going to be outside the prison process, orchestrating, buying things, discussing things. Certainly, uh, and her position as being a medical doctor was very influential because we then have access to records when it comes to post-mortem results. We have records when it comes to people uh, that you are going to make submissions to. They are, you are easily trusted as, as, a, as a medical professional. So definitely the state is looking at her as a very instrumented individual and part of the mastermind team of the person of, of the individual that orchestrated the release or the escape or the great escape of Mr. Best. So it's important for the state to ensure that she's part and parcel. And also they were acting within the doctrine of common purpose. They had one purpose and the one thing which they wanted to achieve was to release Mr. Best. So we could see her turning into a state witness uh, depending on whether they are going to agree with the state in terms of the type of sentences that she, she, she might receive. They have to assist the state greatly because we now have someone who has intimate knowledge that we go and say, on this particular day, we want to spoke with this uh, prison order. This is what they promised us to do. At the end of the day, we paid them an X amount of money. That's linking in or increasing the value of the evidence and the probabilities of the evidence in which the state would have to come in. But I think based on what she was stating in the affidavit, there's just some telltale signs that say at a later stage she may become a state witness. Quite interesting. Uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, for uh, the analysis there. Mpumelelo uh, Zikalala, who joined us from the city of Durban in South Africa. Thank right. you very much for hosting.